Nobody's talking about these, and they totally should be, especially if you're a Nike fanboy. What do they call it? Checks over stripes, right? If you really checks over stripes and you're not talking about these or even thinking about them, shame on you. Hey, what's good, guys? My name's Chris. Welcome back to the official WearTesters.com YouTube channel. Today, we've got a nice little pickup, a lady pickup, right? Yeah. These are not for me. This is a women's release. It's the Women's Waffle Racer LX Series Quick Strike. It's a super interesting shoe. A little expensive. They're 140, but the way that they tell stories in this model and the way that they haven't told this story outside of the shoe itself, it's like beyond me, man. Whoever designed these did such a killer job explaining the story and the heritage of Nike running. Why doesn't everybody know about this? Why doesn't everybody talk about this? Everything's an ad nowadays. It's cool to get your money. We do it. Get them when you can, where you can, get in where you fit in, right? But there's lots of stuff that you could talk about. It doesn't require cutting a check. No pun intended. <laughs> but look at that paper. What does that remind you of? It's a waffle iron. Yes, it is. And then what's that remind you of? Math homework in school. I'll take that. I'll take that. You know, graphing paper. Yes. Or grafting paper, I think is what it's called. But uh, these are fan... Fantastic. Oh my gosh. I was gonna ignore the box for later, but maybe I'll just get it out of the way. Two things I want to get out of the way first. First off is the box itself pays a little bit of homage to old school Nike boxes from like the 70s and stuff like that. It's not a direct like one for one recreation or anything, but it's got certain things on it. Like, sorry if you hear that, my bad. I should have taken that out of the box. It's a little keychain thingy. But it's got the little scripts on there and stuff. But what I really like is the top of the lid. It explains that Beaverton, Oregon is where all this started. And then from that little spot, an unknown spot of the globe, it just you know, and now Nike's everywhere. That's like the American dream and all that stuff is to be able to do something cool like this. So there you go. Now, the second thing I want to talk about is just in case I forget, cause it's so tiny that I might. This guy, first off, it's supposed to come on the, the chain that you heard jiggling around in there. Ours kind of broke off, unfortunately, which is a bummer, but the little trinket itself looks like a locket and you open this shit up. It's the cutest little waffle iron I ever did see. Like, this is cool, man. This is proper storytelling, bro. Like I'm telling you, what is that story? I'm gonna get right into it, don't worry about it. So first things first, again, this is a waffle racer shoe. It's like the old school from the 70s. For those of you guys that don't know, Bill Bowerman. He was the uh, the one that kind of created or co-founded Nike and it was him and Phil Knight, but this is the dude that created what we now know as the waffle sole. And he did it with a waffle iron. Like talk about just like being like, yo man, I'm just gonna try something new. You know what I mean? I just think it's so cool. On the back of the tongue right here, it's got a nice little quote. After breakfast, I borrowed the iron, mixed some synthetic rubber, poured it into the back of the grill and let it cool. Today it's called the waffle sole. You know, if I would have done that as a kid, I would have got my whooped first off, ruining my mom's waffle iron and shit. But if you create a multi-billion dollar company out of it, maybe she'd forgive you, I don't know. These guys right here, just take that concept of sketch to product. Not quite in the, like that literal sense where like they literally have like the sketch on there, like some of the Tinker releases and things like that. We've done that with like the Air Max uh, One, I think it was. Those are dope too. But this one more so pays tribute in the form of Easter eggs, which I just think is really neat. So it's not blatant or in your face, but it is there. Now the tech specs of the shoe, they tried to stay pretty standard or traditional in the sense of what they used to release. So none of the latest and greatest tech, there's no air, there's no zoom, none of that stuff. Built very similarly to an old school runner, but obviously with a little bit of updated stuff, a little bit of new so the foam here typically would have been an EVA wedge. Now it's not an EVA wedge here. It was, actually, I don't know what it is. It's softer than end cap stuff. I'm just gonna assume that it's Phylon, which is EVA, but blends are different amongst all brands. And this guy names it one thing and that guy names it another. And then all of a sudden, boom, you got a marketing gimmick and all that. And you sell a billion dollars worth of shoes. So you've got the EVA wedge and then that is wrapped clearly in the waffle sole, the old school waffle sole on top of that. This is not like that newer one. Like this one looks like an initial prototype, which I really like. That's what this whole shoe is about. And uh, the little numbers that you can see on the side and on the bottom. Do you know what this is? No, I was hoping you would tell me. Man, I got more excited the more I was like looking into these because I was like, oh, that's sick. Oh, that's sick. You know what I mean? Like this little guy, this little waffle iron thing almost was like the thing where I was like, that is dope. But it was actually this number where I was like, man, this is the way to tell a story on your heritage, on a product and give it to the public and just be like, here, you know, this is where we come from. From, you know what I mean? So what is the number? Oh, sorry. The number is, uh, uh, actually I got one more slip. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but no, the number itself is the U.S. patent for the waffle sole. Oh. 
Yeah, you can actually see where it transferred hands from one person to Nike. So the application for the patent was filed in 1972, okay, in August, at the end of August, by a company called BRS Inc., Blue Ribbon Sports. So that's what uh, Nike used to be called before it was Nike. And then the application was finally granted in 1974. So two years later, it took, that's a long time, man, like, sh that's crazy. In 1982, that's when they transferred the name or the ownership of the patent from Blue Ribbon Sports to Nike Inc. because that's now the brand. And I just think it's super cool, man. That's the, the image that they filed to patent. Like, man, that's history right there, dude. Now moving on up to the upper, it just looks like something that's modern. Immediately you're like, oh, they kind of bit off-white. They bit that Virgil style. They use a kind of rip stop. It's actually a little bit better than that. That's My initial thought was that same thing, which is just like, man, it's the same stuff. And then again, when I started looking into it, I was like, no, this is actually like the greatest use of this stuff that I've seen so far. Because it feels like they slap ripstop on everything to the point to where I like the damn material, but I'm just sick of it. Now, this one right here, like I was saying earlier, like what's on the, the paper inside the box, it looks like graphing paper. So it's like, oh, that's cool. That's kind of like they're drawing the lines of the shoe out, the placement of the panels, seeing where things go without having to literally place a, a sketch on the shoe. It would have been really cool if they would have had like the diagram and the lid of the box. They don't, but they should. Now, the overlay materials are probably the most interesting thing to me because it's actual suede and I really like that. But does it feel like that you can see where it is underneath like where it's still like untreated and all that stuff or not untreated but left in its normal what we would consider normal suede state but the areas that are on top or, or visible or touchable are all waxed almost feels like cork like it's got like an interesting texture to it and look and it looks just awesome i love the little old school nike hits even on the tongue awesome dude like this is dope even the swoosh i like man where it's like rough it just doesn't look finished it just looks like hey this is what we're gonna present to you and stuff you know what i mean it is a shame though that they do bite off virgil so hard like this dude really created this like look for nike and now nike's kind of like well thanks <laughs> you know what i mean we're gonna do that for everything this particular shoe though it does work i think that this is really dope and i with this so hard like this is so cool so first off you can grab these now over at phenomglobal.com they're available all the way up to uh, I think it was a men's ten and a half something like that I was able to try them on because she wasn't available to go with me these are a women's shoe and she wasn't sure what they would fit like so I tried them on and I was just like well I think you'll be good going true to size I was very nervous about that uh, <laughs> I, I literally was like good luck getting my size right she's got a different foot shape than me it's a lot smaller than mine and on top of that it's a little bit wide so I don't Ever know you know yeah. I can't even tell you how many shoes I bought for her that she's just like that was cute but <laughs> you know what I mean and I'm just like damn so there came a time when I just stopped buying shoes all together for her and stuff but these I was just like I, I got this man so I went in I tried them on myself they fit like I was just like I think that you'll be good in these I was really worried about this yeah uh, like for a wide footer in my mind at least this looks like a nightmare so I tried them on to me they fit true to size you agree yeah he brought me home a six which is my go-to normally, but... Yeah, not her runner size. Yeah, but there's always that, maybe I should go up half a size because I do have white feet, but these are good. They fit good. The material should break in a little bit as well. The rubber is thin, even though it looks thick and all that stuff, so even that should move around a little bit. These are killer. I thought that these were dope already, just visually, so when I saw that Phenom had put it on their uh, Instagram, which you should follow Phenom if you don't, that's how you know when things are coming. Mm -hmm. um, but that was on there, and I was like, oh, those are cool, but I didn't know what the whole shoe looked like well that was the thing I had seen this shoe in my feed from the various sites and it's definitely a shoe where it has angles to it because mm -hmm. not all of them were flattering and yeah. so I was kind of like mm. and then I saw some other photos that I was like oh those are actually cute and when he brought them home I was like those are definitely cute so I've been waiting in anticipation of us sitting down and getting this recording done so I can wear them I just think that they're they're dope man it's just one of the coolest ways to tell a story I really wish that Nike's marketing or the PR people or whoever's in charge of getting this information out there would really like do a better job because like whoever designed this really worked hard on figuring out all of its heritage pieces fitting them into a shoe without making it look sloppy and then nobody knows about this they just drop as a random ass shoe and everybody's like <laughs> yeah it looks like a fake off white you know what I mean I'm like no man like this is actually important to the brand mm -hmm. as far as like its history it's just one of those things where it's like disappointing it's like these PR people got their thumbs up their ass. 
But anyways, like we were saying, you said they fit true to size. I think they fit true to size. Even for wide footers, should be good to go. Did they feel special? They're definitely like a casual shoe. Yeah. So could you imagine running in something like this? Because this is what an old school runner was I built know. like. I'm always amazed by. But I mean, people didn't know any better. Like well, the, technology hadn't the, advanced. The funny thing is, is that like, it's like reverting back now where it's minimal setups are, you know what I mean? Actually now there's just more. There's such a variety. Yes. There's something for everybody. If you want, if you don't want to wear shoes, they got You don't even have you. to, yeah. <laughs> like, you can literally run barefoot if you want to yeah. and people would be like, all right, it's yeah. one of those people. There's people that you want to feel no pavement whatsoever. Yeah. They've got shoes for that too. It's just a wild time right now. And so I think it's really cool. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. Thanks for all the support. Let us know what you think about these and the heritage behind them down below in the comment section. We'd love to hear from you. So until next time, guys. <laughs> Don't leave me hanging. Oh, well, I got you. I've been watching. I've been watching all of the edits. I'm like, damn, man, she like really on it. She like, she, as soon as as soon as I about to do my sign out, she's like, Whoosh. you know what I mean? I'm like a ninja and back here. But I got you. Yeah. Peace. <laughs> <laughs>